Today's chat is going to cover an overview of R, what the heck are objects anyway, and then common errors that people often make. The R environment is a pretty exciting suite of integrated software facilities, and there's probably lots of reasons why you are interested in learning it, but let's go over a few. First of all, it's a fancy calculator. So if you just open it up, you can start typing in and happily go along like with any other calculator. But it's also more than that. It's an integrative suite of software facilities. And R conveniently has a lot of basic database functions so that you can easily merge, match, or string match without going into another software program. You can also have pretty easy file access. It has a full suite of matrix math facilities, which is really useful for statistical analysis, and a whole bunch of parametric statistical packages so that you can do almost any type of statistics to your heart's content. It has awesome graphics, and I've made these figures, and you can too. You can use them very nicely for presentations or straight to your publications. And it is a fully featured programming language. So you have lots of flexibility to do your custom analyses or to scale up to really big analyses. And the final thing is this really wonderful open source community, which you can access through the R homepage. You've probably already gone there to install the package in the first place. It's hosted through CRAN, or the Comprehensive R Archive Network. So you usually click, the tradition is to click on the mirror that is physically closest to you. So here in Hawaii, I usually pick some place in California. There's also support for all major platforms. Um, we're going to be, I'm going to be using the Mac platform, but there's support for Windows and Linux as well. And there is a huge, huge repository of contributed packages on R and in CRAN, and it keeps growing. Each package has a home page. And the integrated help facilities are really, really nice. So you can find information about every component of R. One of the challenges for new users is sometimes it's hard to find the package. You know that there's some package that you're really interested in using, but what's it called? Where do I find it? Well, one thing that helps people is this task view. You can look at the task view and people write up these things for their area of expertise and it's filled with great information that's really helpful because experts in the field write a little blurb about what the basic functionalities are within this group of packages and it tells a little bit about which one each, what each one does. So people find it really helpful. And then finally, there are a large number of free manuals on CRAN. And a lot of people have been very successful at learning how to use R using these free manuals. You should take advantage of it, definitely. So let's play with R. So how does R store data? Well, at the most basic level, R saves information in variables or objects. Assignment is what happens when you put something into something else. And it works by two types of operators, the equal sign. And the rule is, the right, whatever is on the right side, for example, 6, is put into whatever is on the left side. Here it's x. So this means x equals 6 means take 6 and put it into x. The arrow indicates, it's just like the equal sign, except that it indicates which direction the assignment goes. So in the first line, it's take 6 and put it into x. And on the second line, it's take 6 and put it into x. You can note, note that you can put it either way, but the arrow 
clears up any ambiguity, which is really nice. And so this is often the assignment operator that I use. One way that you can run into a little bit of trouble is when you do something like 6 equals x. <laughs> now that is going to cause an error because if you just read it literally just like the computer would, it says take x and put it into 6. Now r is going to have a big problem with this because it is not going to want to reassign the value of 6. <laughs> It's going to tell you this is wrong and give you all kinds of complaints. Okay, enough of that. So how does R store data? Well, conceptually, it works kind of like your mama's bureau drawers. And this is a favorite cartoon of mine from one of my favorite programming books, the Fortran coloring book. It is just really silly and really fun. So you take a value and you shove it into a drawer. So the drawers are like slots for the objects and the drawers have names. So in R there are drawers for numbers, for characters or alphabetical strings, for logical values which are either true or false or zero or one and then complex numbers. Now don't worry, we're not going to work with complex numbers in this course. You can create a new drawer or a new object by creating a name, for example x, and just shoving a value into it. R will automatically assign the type or the mode. So in this case, we created a new variable x just by shoving the value 25 into it. So x is the name and 25 is the value. And if we check what is the mode of x using the mode function, it'll return that it's numeric. Yay! So you see, all you have to do is name it and put something in it. R looks at what you did and it says, aha, this must be a vector of type numeric. It's as easy as pi. <laughs> So objects or bureaus can come in different shapes. And different shapes have different attributes, okay? Or different object types have different attributes. Here's the vector, and it has one and only one attribute, which is length. So a vector is basically a sequence of variables that are all um, of identical type. And so all you need to know is how many elements are in the vector. A matrix is just like a multiplied vector. Now you have, you have three vectors put right together. So now you have rows and columns. And a matrix has uh, another attribute called dimension. So dimension has, so there's two, rows and columns. And another thing about matrices is that they're rectangular. So all of the columns have to have the same length. A related type is called a data frame. And it looks very similar to a matrix, except in a vector or a matrix, all the values have the same type. So it's either all numeric or all character or all logical or what have you. In a data frame, it's a little bit different. You can have a character column and numeric columns put together. So for example, you might have a column for species names and then other columns for different measurements of those species. This is called record format. And it's designed so that you can have one row for one observation. Okay, each row would be like the value for a different species. Values in each vector have the same type, but the vectors can be different types. Okay, moving right along, we have the next type, which is a little bit more flexible, which is called the list. Now a list is a list of objects of different types. Well, they can be the same type, but the, the big news is that they can have different types. 
So it offers a lot more flexibility and it allows you to store together a collection of related information. Like for example, all of the important bits of information that you might get out of a model fitting. Like for example, you might have the starting seed value, you might have the function that you fit, and you might have the input data frame, and you might have some output statistics, all kept together very conveniently for you in a list. R has many, many functions that operate on lists, so we're definitely going to learn about this as the course goes on. All of these classes, all of these are classes of objects, the vector class, matrix, data frame, and list. The final type is called a function. Now a function is a function in every other type of language. It's like a black box. You put something in to the function and what you get out is the output. So for example, you might have put 5 in oops, and get 25 out. That would be like a squaring function. So the last part of today's chat, we're going to go over some of the things that might make you pull your hair out. <laughs> but just try to keep your sense of humor. Once you learn these things, it'll just be a piece of cake. Okay, so here are the common sources of error. 99.5% of errors are typos. Um, R does not like typos. Computers are very anal that way. So length equals 6 is not the same thing as lengths with an S or plural equals 6. R is also case sensitive. Length is not equal to capital length. R has big conniptions if you use parentheses and square braces incorrectly. They have special meanings. So the parentheses is used always, 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 only, only, only with functions. Okay, so the mean is a function which computes the mean of a vector. And so if you use mean parentheses x, what will, it will return is the average or the mean of x. If you try to type mean with square brackets x, it's not going to know what you're talking about because square brackets are used for indexing. So if you have a vector or a matrix or, an, or, or a data frame, use the square braces to, to pull out particular values of those objects. So if you had a vector x that had five elements, vector bracket five would pull out the last element of vector x. Okay, so the, the mean square bracket x doesn't make any sense because the mean is a function. It's not a vector, it's not a data frame, it's not anything else except a function. So it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, so by the same token, x parentheses 5 makes no sense either because x is not a function. Capiche? Capiche, right? Okay, the, the number four, um, you will make this mistake a lot and then you will stop making it. <laughs> commas in the wrong place. Commas are used to separate dimensions in a data frame. So x square brace 5 comma 3 means you have something with two dimensions. x is a matrix, matrix or a data frame and you want the fifth row third column of x. So if you leave out the comma, x5 space 3 square brace, that will give you an error because R will have no idea what you're talking about. If you put in an extra comma, R will still have no idea what you're talking about because why? Well, now you're saying that x has three dimensions and R doesn't know what you're talking about because it should have only two. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the last most common source of error is forgetting quotes for character strings. So quotes are used to indicate literal character strings. So when you put quote A, close quote, you mean literally the letter A. Or if you put quote ABC, you mean literally the letters ABC. 
Um, if you don't quote it, R will assume you're talking about a variable or an object. So A without quotes is R thinks there's supposed to be an object called A. So if you don't haven't defined A as an object, it'll return one type of error. Um, and if and if not, um, well, all kinds of funny things could potentially happen. But anyway, just be aware of that. So uh, use quotes to mean literal values of character strings, and then don't use quotes when you mean object names. Okay? Um, well, that's it for now. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in class next time. Take care.